Our next presenter is Catherine Iwamasa. The presentation will be on iLabs implementation. Good morning, Jay. Uh, good morning, everyone. So uh, today I'm going to talk to you about the um, iLab implementation and give you an update. Um, I think the last time we talked was in November, so we've actually had a lot of activity since then. Um, so as a reminder, the project deliverable for this project is an integrated core facility management system. So this has got several components. Uh, the first one is the actual iLab hosted solution, uh, which is requires a lot of configuration and collaborating with each individual core. Uh, the second is the integration with our single sign-on. And then the final piece uh, is the integration with our PeopleSoft financials. And um, for those of you that don't know, um, what's a core? A core is essentially a business unit uh, within the university that is providing services to researchers. Generally, um, really high-end kind of instrumentation or specialized knowledge. So some examples would be imaging or bioinformatics or uh, specific instrument usage. Um, we have about 50 research, research cores within the School of Medicine, approximately 14 within the School of Engineering. And then we also have a few in the College of Arts and Science. And I would say, uh, given the number of research cores in the School of Medicine, they've been um, the primary driver behind this project. As a reminder, what does core facility management really include? Um, so the system itself allows cores to manage end-to-end -end services for customers. So this includes the initial service request, uh, which you see at the top of the slide, then um, providing information for quotes and review and confirmation from customers, and then even um, helps to manage the work that the core is doing at the request of the customer. And in order to do that, that includes some system integrations with instruments that control the power so that we can be sure that people are using the instruments when they say they're going to use them and um, making sure that they have reservations to use the instruments. So there are some pieces there that we had to deploy that are kind of cool. Um, and then the core billing uh, for the work that was completed, which it, uh, refers to the integration with our financial system. And then, of course, around all of that, we have the reporting, uh, reporting for core managers to help them with running the lab, reporting for audits, and also reporting for funding agencies and grants. So the primary benefits, the first one is to improve the utilization and the recovery for the resources that are in the core. So if you have a really expensive piece of equipment and other people are using it, then recovering costs helps you to maintain and protect that instrument. Uh, compliance with funding agencies through reporting, by ensuring the security and the integrity of the data, we're able to do a better job of providing information to funding agencies. Um, and then the piece um, that's kind of my favorite is streamlining administrative processes. So the big example in this case would be billing for services. So history we're not going to talk as much about today, but just to remind everyone, this has actually been several years in the making, and it's been a long time collaboration between the School of Medicine and UTech uh, to get to the point where we are now, which is implementing the solution from our selected vendor. So the implementation is being conducted in waves. Our wave one uh, included the integrations with FIN and with the single sign-on, and additionally the th first three cores to go into the system. And right now we're aiming for January 2017 for go live, um, and I'll elaborate on that on the next slide. And then wave two, we've already selected the next three cores, and we'll be starting with them in January, which is now. 
for wave one, we had originally planned to go live in December. So we've done a lot of work since we spoke with you in November. So the first thing is that the configuration for the cores is complete. So this is in the hosted solution. Um, so each of those cores has their own core page with all of the services and forms populated and tested. And then in addition to that, we also have for two of the cores we had, um, or actually three, um, we had uh, instrument control included in the core. Getting those devices out to the individual instruments, getting them hooked up to the network, and then testing that has all been completed. With our integrations, uh, the SSO, the single sign-on, the test results were good. However, with the FIN integration, we've identified a couple of issues during our testing. And so right now we're working on the resolution for those issues. Um, and we hope to have that cleared up uh, very quickly. That said, we're going ahead uh, with the Wave 2 cores because that doesn't really need to be held up. Uh, while we're working on the FIN resolution. So our kickoff for the Wave 2 cores is actually going to be this week, which will be very exciting. So from what we can see so far um, with the cores that are in the system and set up, everything looks like it's going to be very useful and very valuable to the university. So we're excited about that and we're hoping to be able to show that very soon. And in the meantime, if you have questions, um, our contacts for the project are uh, Matt DeVries, who is our project business lead. Joan Schenkel with the School of Medicine is our business sponsor. And then I am the project manager. And of course, we have a number of folks working within UTAC and within the individual cores to support the project. And um, I'll take this opportunity to thank them for their work. It's been really great. Uh, with that, that kind of concludes my update. Um, Jay, are there any questions from the audience? One of them here is, how do I get iLab for my core facility? Uh, so as I mentioned, we've already started the Wave 2 cores, so that's going to take us out a couple of a uh, couple of weeks, six to eight weeks generally. Um, but if you're interested in being assigned to one of the later waves, um, you should contact Matt DeVries. Uh, one more question here, Catherine. Which three cores are included in the Wave 2 Go Live? So uh, the Wave 2 cores are actually going to be um, light microscopy, proteomics, and then the third one, oh, is the Swage Lock Center. So those are the three that are gonna be going in next.